someone who smart more you first is easy. But Jesus was calm and self possessed. I read that angels, the spirit of prophecy tells us that angels were amazed. They were appalled that Jesus did not call for the death of those who were ridiculing him. They could not understand. How could he take the humiliation, pulling out his beard? They would take a swallow and, and anything that came up, all the mucus and the field, they would spit in his face. And they planted a crown of thorns, pressed it down the cranium of his skull, and the blood gushed out. The spikes in his hands and feet and a spear in his hand, and still he said, Father, forgive them. He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have come down from the cross, but he contained himself. Let me give us a few tips. And this is for anger management because don't tell me you don't get angry. All of us do get angry, amen? You see, in church we look good every Sabbath. Whenever you are angry, you say things you have no business saying. Someone said, he who, he who has a sharp tongue soon cuts his own throat. <laughs> if you speak when you are angry, you will make the best speech you will ever regret. <laughs> if you want to take the wind out of an angry man's sail, just stay calm. The best way to get rid of a hothead is to give him a cold shoulder. Every minute you are angry, you lose one hour of happiness. Many of us have lost many hours. It's hard to be reasonable and angry at the same time. Men with clenched fists cannot shake hands. The world needs some warm hearts and fewer hot heads. Amen. Remember this friend of mine, anyone who angers you conquers you. If you allow somebody else to get you angry, you are no longer in charge. They are in charge of you. Because we need to allow Christ to be in control. Amen. Amen. Have this ever happened to you or have you ever seen this happen? You see a couple arguing to a high pitch and the wife gets out of the car and she begins to walk. And he says, honey, babe, get back in the car. My question is, how come the one who is most angry always have to do the walking? <laughs> the emptier the pot, the quicker the boy. Anger is a wind that blows out the lap of the mind. And I've come to understand that people who get angry and they're in an argument, they go on and on and on, and they can't even remember what they're angry about. <laughs> Anger makes your mouth work faster than your mind. But Jesus was angry but he was not out of control. I'm telling you what I know, friend of mine. While I was in South Florida and Miami, I spent over 20 years in the system, in prison. Every week I would visit three prisons. And over those years I've seen men who had no criminal records, some of five or six times repeats, but men who in a spur of moment 
and some of the stories will make you cringe. You, be, you can become a murderer in an instant because you have not learned how to control the anger. And the prisons, the jails are infested with them. Thank God we have someone we can turn to, amen? Amen. I remember Jim. He was there every Sabbath on the Bible study. Happy and peaceful. And he shared a story, a story with me one day. He said, B, one day I had an argument with my wife. No criminal records. And he said in an instant, he put his hand around her neck. It was too late. It doesn't take long, friend of mine. You can go from zero to a hundred in a matter of seconds. It's like a, one of those muscle cars, amen? He said, I wish I can take it back. He got baptized in the first baptism we had in the prison. Eleven guys got baptized and Gene was so happy. He said, I wish I could. You cannot take back the past, friend of mine. Lost time can never be regained. We can never make up for lost time, but we can redeem the time that we now have. Consider the God who created you before you get any older. That's what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. That's good counsel, amen? Make him number one priority, first preference, before you get any older. In other words, be afraid to face another day without considering God in your life. I don't know how people can make it without Christ in their life. Being a Christian is difficult by itself because we face the same challenges that everyone faces, amen? And then the devil is on your heels. So it's total dependence upon Christ every single day. Amen. But how can you make it without Christ when there is no one or nowhere to turn? I remember the stories told of Some Christians from Warsaw, Poland, met some Christians from Germany after World War II, ten years after, and they wanted to apologize for the brutality of the German army with the Polish people. They the Polish Christians did not even want to consider such a meeting. And uh, however they met, and the Polish Christians said to the German Christians, every stone in Warsaw, Poland is stained with Polish blood from a German bullet obeying it. This is too difficult. And they decided to part ways. And the one who was most adamant in his opposition suggested, well, can we pray the Lord's prayer before we leave? Hesitantly, they all agreed. As they began to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we there was silence. No one could continue. And with tears in his voice, he said, if I cannot begin to pray, pray this prayer, if I cannot begin to forgive, I cannot pray this prayer. Forgiveness brings healing, amen? amen. Vengeance belongs to God. He will repay what is, amen? amen? It's not easy. But it's possible by His grace. Amen. Amen. 
So what do you think? What do you think, friend of mine? We live in a wicked world. But we are a mighty God, amen? Trouble does last always. Joy comes in the morning. And this too will pass, amen? amen? And if you think you have seen it all, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because if, if David had not gotten a victory over the lion and the bear, there was no way he could face the giant. And if he cannot give up something from the plate now, the time is coming when we're going to have to give up the whole plate. Mm. Amen? Amen? So the little things that we struggle with, the very things, one of these that will hit the very thing, that will cause us, that will be an instrument for us to be lost. Salvation is not found in things, it's found in a person. And that person is Christ, amen, because he is the Prince of Peace. I know what I'm telling you, friend of mine, I know what it's like being out in the streets. I had one of the worst temper in the world. My mouth was terribly a potty mouth. I would curse and swear so much, I would even curse myself. I was so angry. Wow. I could not control, I could not contain myself. I did not know Christ until my late teenage years. I would get into fights, being on the streets and doing drugs, having my own way, being caught up all over many times. Knowing what it's like being in hospital beds. That's why I found myself in prison, because I can identify with the brothers and tell them that there is hope in Christ. Hallelujah. When we walk through these doors, we don't have to come back and be a repeat five and six times and get four and five life sentences. There is hope in Christ. Amen. He loves us. Put our hands in his hands. The man who walked the dust streets and the rocky places of Palestine, everywhere he went, he was doing good. The blind saw and the deaf heard and the lame leaped for joy. The demoniac was cleansed, the leper was restored. And even the dead was restored. I thought if Jesus came to all that, if he can speak to a donkey, if he can cause the iron to swim, mm. the iron that was in the belly of the river came up on top of the water and began to swim. If my God can cause the iron to swim, there's nothing he cannot do, amen. amen. He can change our hearts. Some of us have not been tested like others. But it's coming. The time to pray and to build faith is when it's in a calm. When the storm comes, it's too late. Now is the preparation time. Amen? Amen. That's what the sea captain told his crew. He said, how can you keep so calm during the storm? He said, I prayed when it was calm. My duty now is to steer the ship. But we have a captain in Jesus. Amen? Amen. It happens in our workplace, in places of employment, where we socialize. It happens even in church. The devil comes to church, you know that? Amen. Don't allow anybody to get you angry, amen? amen? By His grace, we can live in harmony with this room and receive the precious blessing that He has for us. May God bless us, friend of mine. So what do you think? Let us stand as we sing our closing hymn. Closing song is going to be number 600. Hold fast to my song. Number 600.
always God and every eye is closed. If you want to say in your minds, Lord, help me in temper and in tone to represent you. I just invite you to raise your hand with me and close in prayer. Lord, we come before we come before your throne of grace to give you thanks for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And as we face the trying days ahead, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will give us that strength that we need, that determination, the desire just to please you. Give us wisdom to make right decisions, to be in the right places at the right times. And Lord, as we encounter situations and the news that come to us, give us the strength to react in temper and in tone Amen. to represent you so that others will still see Christ in us. And give us the peace of mind and the love of Jesus in our hearts. And as we face another week, may we tell somebody about Jesus, his love, and his soon coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.